So, we have one more video on the easy structure, the E versus C, and this time we're going to look on how white wins. Because so far it looks pretty nice for black, good endings, slowly taking over the initiative, but white also goes for this structure, and a guy like uh, Tivyakov has very good result with, with white. Uh, by the way, it's not only white that gets uh, this structure, it could also be reversed, for instance, in the English or the Catalan. But uh, for, for this uh, kind of game, we will look at white in a C3 Sicilian. It could also easily be a French terrace or something like that that so what are white's chances well we will explain as we go you will learn a little bit about how uh, how white should play in this game and uh, and probably understand a little bit more about this structure that we have been struggling to understand here on gm talks it's a very important structure it arises all the time and if you master this you're gonna do well in your chess career i can assure you that Okay, so let's get into it. Um, we are uh, white, or Tivyakov is white, uh, and I think he it was from 2008, and I think he won the European Championship with this game. So it's extremely important. And he plays C3, and that he does sometimes. Sometimes he plays the open Sicilian, and and, uh, and sometimes he plays nice C3. He tried all kind of stuff. Uh, he has his open openings. I think he done pretty well with C3. Uh, he is not a top player anymore. Uh, but he was very strong at some point where he lost to Adams in a uh, match close to the World Championship stuff. D5 uh, is um, criticized by uh, Tivyakov in his notes in chess base, and he recommends instead knight f6. Uh, I would say that um, I'm not sure uh, neither of them uh, which is best. Uh, but this is all very normal. Uh, Black can now uh, transpose into an isolated queen pawn position if he takes on d4. Uh, that is probably not recommended right here. And uh, but we have a full. But that gives me the chance to tell you we have a full course on the isolated queen pawn position here on GM Talks. I think almost three hours of uh, entertaining and. Uh, instructive talk about the isolated queen pawn position. So if you're interested in isolated queen pawn position, check that out, please. Okay, this is all normal. E6 is the solid move. When I was uh, younger, they used to play bishop d4 all the time. That's not so popular anymore. Um, knight c6 was also popular at some point with the idea to go bishop d4 and castle queenside. It's all very sharp. The, no, the, the most common move is e6. It's solid. Black gets ready to to um, to develop uh, very fast. White can here go. Uh, you can go bishop e3. It's one line that will definitely lead to uh, an isolated queen pawn position in most situations. You can go bishop d3, hoping to get a very favorable uh, isolated queen pawn position. Uh, you can play bishop e2, probably with the idea to go knight e5 and bishop f3. I think. Svesnikov did that. Uh, he, by the way, he's, he's, he died recently from Corona, I think. It was rather sad. He was a big figure in the chess world on openings. And, uh, and you can go knight a3, which is the modern move. Uh, just developing the knight and getting ready to annoy the queen. Or sometimes you go here, sometimes you go here. It's not so bad. By the way, uh, black's most Probably the most solid option here is to go queen back. Uh, might be the best move uh, just to, to stay flexible. Then knight b5 makes no sense. You just go a6. Instead, uh, Emil does this move. And uh, after this move, and this is, by the way, in his note, he explains this is why he went for this line, because he thinks it's better for uh, white. Uh, and here, the check here is, is a serious threat. Hitting everything, so the queen has to go back, and um, and white is ahead in development. And by the way, now we have uh, the structure here. We have the C versus the E, or the E versus C. Easy structure, not easy to play, easy to get. And uh, I'm trying to to take hold of that name. I don't think anybody else used it. Uh, this position, uh, it's clear that white is ahead in development. That is usually 
a normal thing for this structure. And uh, and as we've seen that if, if Black gets to develop all his pieces, he's absolutely fine, probably better. Uh, so White will have to use this advantage in development to and try to increase it or uh, try to start an attack on Black King, try to get a dominating position where his pieces are much more active or uh, inflict a weakness on Black. So to recap, very important, use your development advantage with White uh, to either launch an attack, uh, create a dominating position that, or, or inflict a weakness uh, on on black, and this is uh, so. This is the, the the point for white to play. That's also why usually uh, you will see if you start to look at games played by grandmasters or strong players in the easy structure, you will realize they play really, really slowly in the early. Uh, as soon as they don't know don't know what goes on, the the tempo drops dramatically because every second counts or every move you cannot waste a move if white goes something say oh i'm afraid of knight e4 uh, and i will play a3 here his advantage is gone immediately so you have to play very actively with white and try to uh, utilize your uh, advantage in speed and development uh, black uh, plays this move um, it makes a lot of sense to to annoy the bishop here that can either go here which is is, uh, is what he does or he can take here and he play something like this i think they still play this uh, and it's it's a kind of a double edge position the position has now transform, transformed black's structure is uh, you could say compromised but you could also say that it's more solid and it's uh, in some way uh, it's 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 a completely different situation here. Black has more dynamic potential here. Where among others, he has a B file that could uh, turn into something. Uh, and and there is uh, also this makes leap suddenly something that could be very annoying for White with the bishop on D4. Anyway, this is what not what he did. He played bishop D5, and um, and of course, if Black goes something like this. Then you will just go back and say that, okay, the, the white squares has been weakened. And we notice that with the pawn on c3, white's development can be finished in like five moves. Two knight moves, two bishop moves, and castle, and then you're it. And then you have two rooks, uh, you move the queen, and you have two rooks in the center. That's eight moves to be totally mobilized. And black is far away from that. The rook on a8 will not move for, for some time, usually. Um, Another move here, you could play, he played queen b6. You could also uh, play something like bishop here. Um, and you would probably take with white and play here, something like this. This is probably, this makes, makes some sense, something like this. And uh, Ksiv Jakob claims that white is uh, slightly better here. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, at least it's not the best bishop here, and it will not be easy to push the pawns. So, so probably black, white is slightly better, uh, but nothing fantastic in, in, in any way, um, for sure. Um, instead, he played uh, queen b6, and uh, Ksiv Jakob had pre prepared this move. And we see that you don't you don't waste time covering this pawn. You try to see if it can be sacrificed, which it can here, because this move is not possible. Then comes this move, and we have some serious trouble here because this move is winning the queen. Yeah. So this is kind of mess you get in, and uh, and this move is even worse because then it's made in one. So this is uh, this can go very bad uh, for, for for white and, and in general white have to be sort of um, he has to have some courage. You cannot play this like a wimp. Then you you'll get wiped out uh, or black will take over the board. Uh, it's also why this kind of structure is is good to play against passive players with black because you will not get blown off the board uh, while it's a it, can be a little bit dangerous against strong attacking players because they are very dangerous with uh, developing initiative and so on. Anyway, uh, he took on d4. Uh, there are many, many moves here. 
I don't know what to do. Uh, you could move your knight, but then uh, you just move your knight. So hmm, that doesn't feel good. Uh, so taking here makes sense. Take back. Again, I don't recommend this. A knight b5 looks very, very scary. And Tiago mentioned this move, which could be interesting, uh, just to, to kick the, the bishop off uh, different uh, places here. Um, maybe. Interesting move. Um, instead, uh, Emil played this move. And uh, by the way, Emil is the kind of player that should in general not get these kind of positions because um, he is the kind of guy who who's not that defensive inclined. He would rather move forward on every move uh, instead of defending anything. And that's also <laughs> I think he should. But but of course, what can you do? He tried to play the Sicilian, then comes this c3. That's a kind of a party killer. Um, Tiakov uh, took uh, the pawn and um, the bishop, the knight, and and was was ready to to play some sort of a position. After if e takes, then uh, he will cast. He will play queen e2 check. Uh, so he take here, which is uh, is is kind of cool. Um, uh, oops. That was uh, shrewd, like this, uh, and um, and here to Jakob said his his preparation ended. Uh, you could say that queen takes, and you will get a slight, slight, slight initiative in the ending. It will not be much. It will not be much. Um, I think black is 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 should be okay. He say something. F6 bishop here and bishop c6 is a total draw. So castle makes uh, makes sense. And um, and he went back, and that was probably um, uh, a mistake. Uh, he he should find another move here, um, and he should probably go for some bishop takes c3 and get some initiative. Anyway, uh, that's uh, we we keep the structure after bishop c5, so that suits us well. And uh, now we have uh, an interesting position. We have it without knights. And in general, um, that's good. I think in general, favor black a little bit. But here, white is way ahead in development. And um, and here, it's black to move. And it's not so easy to get your pieces developed. And we also see something else. White is due to uh, the structure. White have uh, the open E file here. The open D file is black is not ready to do anything here at all. And the king side looks scary. So I would be very scared here with black uh, because uh, you can see what's coming, right? And this is some of the part because here you can say that white is still. A hit in development. He's either trying to inflict a weakness, win material, get a dominating position, or start an attack. And here, there's an obvious way to start an attack, and I'm sure you can find it. So I'll just give you uh, 10 seconds to find the maneuver White is hoping to make here, uh, which is, of course, going something like, oops, here, 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 and. We have serious uh, trouble on the king, and the, and it will be help with with the bishops and the queen. Uh, and I don't think black black will have uh, will have to exchange something to avoid that. Um, so bishop here, rook, found his final, develop his pieces, and rook d3, and black is is holding on. I don't know what to do. The white is going to play, white's gonna play the same, no matter what. He's going to just go go here, and uh, the the immediate threat is is this move, which is uh, is is kind of a problem. Sometimes you can even take here, but it's maybe not. Maybe this queen can somehow join the, the defense uh, on this side. Uh, black um, could also defend with the king. Doesn't look so good. For something, something like this, and and white go here, and something like this is is probably uh, very lost. Uh, I think this is a threat in this situation. So this kind of stuff is is not recommended. It, 
So he tries a better move, bishop here, but after this move, he's in uh, some sort of a trouble. And take here. There's no other way to defend, uh, of course, the d5, you just take it. That's a horrible move to play, so, and yeah, if you don't, you can probably see this, that uh, there is uh, some, some threats here, so. And, um, and this is the smart thing, and I probably uh, Emil missed this. Uh, the problem is that if you move the rook now, then comes here, and and this is yeah, this is not fun, right? So um, you'll probably do something like this next, right? So um, after king h8, so this is is just winning. So after this move, um, you have to go here take here and here and white is a clear pawn up and we can say that uh, for uh, our purposes the game is, is more or less over now white is is winning he, he managed to get something from his his initiative and that is uh, what white should generally uh, aim for in this structure you have a lead in, uh, in development you probably have more active pieces you have to make something happen pretty fast either you maybe you get some you get some concessions uh, sometimes white is, is actually able to to for instance uh, push the pawn here then white black has no minority attack and white will have uh, have more space than in in general lines where white suddenly get pushed back as we have seen in other videos on the easy structure by the way if you are not seeing them yet i would definitely recommend you go back and see them there's also a bonus video on the easy structure in the member section only allowed uh, for members um, who, who of course is, is 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 paying the bill anyway we'll just see the rest of the game rather fast um, and uh, this is probably a little bit too passive um, and they are in time trouble here um, and they decided to to exchange and of course white is winning but it's not super easy uh, putting it on um, on black sometimes you should be careful if if they could get located then it will not be so easy um, and they're just moving around here And this is important, uh, always an important move in these kind of positions. Keep the queen centralized is uh, the key. But they are in serious trouble here, time trouble here. And and of course, it was a very crucial game. Steve Yakov had to win this game to um, to become European champion. And attacking something, we exchange. and. And looks a little bit spooky with this pawn coming, but there's nothing here. And and this is a general rule. I, I hear Black, of course, if he could get his queen transposed to this square, then uh, something <laughs> could be bad for Black, but it's not going to happen uh, for sure. Getting ready for... Um, and that just loses because of... And here's, of course, a rule you probably all know that when you're ahead in material, which you do exchange, you should exchange pieces, especially the pieces that can give the opponent counterplay. Uh, Black is hoping that he will be allowed to, to get some counterplay with uh, the bishop, the pawn, and the queen. And after this, that's just uh, fantasy. Nothing, uh, no counterplay will come. Now, uh, of course, white is, is blockading the, the pawn, so it cannot be pushed, but he, other things can be pushed. And, uh, but you can also go here and exchange something and win a pawn, and black is just hanging on here, hoping he will do something, but of course it's, it's hopeless. And here he resigned. Uh, there's nothing here at all. So a great game by Tivyakov. Uh, an interesting example. We will see one more example. I think 
two of the main players in this structure is uh, Sergei Tevyakov, because he's been playing this for white in all kinds of openings all his life. And another guy is uh, Michael Adams, uh, which we will uh, look at in the next easy structure uh, uh, video. And this was GM Talks. Thank you for watching. And remember to like, subscribe, and tell all your friends and stuff. Right? Thank you.